All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and we are back for week 13. We got a massive matchup this week with the Patriots Monday Night Football, a Monday Night Football showdown. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, we don't have to go over the the Bills big win versus the Saints, obviously. You know, we covered that last week on the show. Uh, so we're just doing a little bit of week 12 kind of cleanup, I guess, Manny. That, that's probably yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah. Uh, we got to do our winners and losers of the week, and then uh, we will be giving our picks. I, we, we're going to have to talk about yours for a second, though. So let's, let's do winner and loser first, though, and then we'll yeah. get into everything else, and we will obviously get into a large discussion about the Monday Night Football game after. Um, you go first, though, Manny. Sure. Who, who is your winner of the week for Week 12? Uh, week 12, I got two running backs as my winners of the week. Uh, first one is Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Mixon. Uh, okay. 165 yards, two TDs. Uh, he, you know, he's one of those guys that never gets talked about a lot. Like, he doesn't get mm-hmm. talked about like the Dalvin Kicks and the Zeke Elliott's and the Derrick Henry's. But the guy's always been pretty consistent throughout like his his time with the Bengals so far and yesterday again he got 165 two touchdowns last week and nobody's still talking about him like I I I don't hear a lot about him and he's been productive I think this whole year and even last year he was pretty productive too so uh, I got to give him a shout out because I I think people aren't giving him enough credit uh how good he is um, the other he's, guy, he's one of those guys, and I think it's really cool that he does this when he's on Cincinnati because Cincinnati hasn't typically been very good. I don't think he's like a top five running back in the no. league year to year, but no. he's always if you if you're listing off running backs, he's one of those guys who over the last whatever three four years, if you're going through your top ten, more likely than not, he's going to have been on that top ten list every single year because yeah. when he's in the game, he produces and. To be able to do that behind what used to be a bad, just god awful Cincinnati yeah. line, yeah. and just a bad Cincinnati offense was impressive. And now that he has the team around him to kind of help and allow teams to game plan, not just for him, like he's doing, yeah. he's just doing it once again. So I, it, Joe Mixon, what he does on the field, very impressive. Yeah, and he he doesn't get enough, uh, I guess, media you know, talk as, as other running backs who probably do worse than him sometimes. <laughs> like, like the last couple of years, Zeke has not been Zeke. And no, so, he has not. <laughs> and, and, and he gets talked about so much and a guy like Joe Mixon does not. And obviously that has to do with him playing in Dallas, uh, him playing in Cincinnati and Zeke playing in Dallas has a lot to do with it. But, but I want to give my shout out to Joe Mixon. The other guy, speaking of Zeke Elliott and the Cowboys, I have to give a shout out to Tony Pollard because like Tony, that one. Tony Pollard uh, had a kickoff return, but it's not just his kickoff return, but it, he's actually playing a pretty productive run game this year, and he's uh, he's been playing a little bit more than I think what Zeke fantasy football fans might might want him to uh like he he's been pretty productive in the run game the the pass catching game and obviously you saw him last week return that one for 100 so Mm -hmm. i want to give a shout out to um to him and uh people who own zeke uh, uh elliot like myself in fantasy uh, we don't like seeing Tony Tony Pollard do what he does, but I think you're gonna start seeing more and more of Tony Pollard in, uh, I think more in the middle of the field rather than uh, at the goal line. I think you're gonna mm-hmm. see Zeke more in the red zone goal line kind of things, where I think you're gonna start seeing more Tony Pollard in the you know like in that especially that pass catching you know the third downs middle of the field kind of plays. They're, I mean, they're a really nice one-two punch. Obviously, Zeke, like yeah. you mentioned, Zeke is not the same player that he used to be. He's been yeah. been pretty good this year. I think he's been yeah. better this year than he yeah. was the last yeah. two yeah. years probably. 100%. But he's still not that player that he was his first two to three years in the league where he yeah. was just a monster and in conversation for literally the best back in the league. But yeah. what him and Pollard provide together out of that backfield, it's just a constant rotation of, okay, well – 
we got to make sure we have somebody ready to stop the run, no matter what the formation is. Cause if they got a running back out there, if they motion them into the backfield, somebody has got to be ready because yeah. either of them, even though Zeke isn't the fastest guy, they can make big things happen. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, they're a great one-two punch right now for them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 working for Dallas, and uh, I think he doesn't get it like Joe Mixon because Zeke is in front of him. He doesn't get much of the credit uh, uh, about the success of the run game that Dallas has this year, and mm-hmm. so I want to give him that shout out. And he returned a hundred return yard kickoff return which was fantastic. Yeah, how crazy how crazy that somebody who's involved in the offense would also be used on a, a kick return or punt return you know like it's it's yeah. crazy that somebody would even think of doing that because <laughs> the bills would never imagine to do that <laughs> yeah i just uh, yeah that's yeah. i don't know i would i would love for the bills to use people in more than just one capacity but yeah yeah the, the fact that they can use pollard to be that that second string running back pretty much who's yeah. He comes in as the rotation back, and he's the return man. Yeah. It gives him a little bit of extra that versatility, and I mean, he's just he's just good. And he's electric when he touches the ball. And it's it doesn't seem much of a drop off from Zeke to Pollard, which is I think great for the Cowboys. Um, I I almost I wonder if that's because of how good Pollard is or how good he's become, or if yeah. it's because of the O-line. I'm sure it's probably a mix of it. But, yeah, it, I mean, it's, probably a it's mix of it. they the offense, no matter which one of them is in, it just keeps rolling. They might run it a little bit differently, but it's a good offense he's no matter which better. running back they have. Yeah, he's gotten better, too. Like, his, his – I, and I don't know if it's just watching Zeke uh, all these years behind him. Uh, it just He just seems – he knows what he's doing a lot more than he did in the previous years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. My, my winner. Um, oh, first I'll just give a shout out to Cordero Patterson. Yeah. Finally, he's being used the way he should be used. Yes. Like not just being used as a wide receiver or as a running back. It's just as a weapon. Yeah. So they're using him in every single capacity that he could touch the ball. And that's awesome. Really don't like that for the sake of like the Bills play the Falcons in a couple weeks, but for his sake, for the sake of his career, for like finally getting to see what what his potential was and what we've missed out on all these years of watching him play, I've I've loved seeing what the Falcons have done with him. So that's that's one of them. Another one I'm going to roll with the Patriots because not because they won, they're not winners because they won. It's because they're just getting so damn lucky on their like have you have you seen the field goal stat against them? Yeah. Sixty teams are only kicking at 60%. a sixty percent rate yeah. when they're yeah. kicking field goals. Yeah. I think that's somewhere around like ten percent better than any other team where like other other teams are kicking seventy percent or better against other teams yeah. in the NFL. But teams are only making 60% of their field goals against the Patriots. So they could have a successful drive, and it's still just only a little bit better than a 50-50 shot that they're going to actually convert if they're kicking a field goal. Just insane. We've talked before about how the Patriots have gotten very lucky. I know the Bills haven't really played anybody great on their schedule either, so not going to like knock the Patriots for that. Patriots play But the, the Patriots same have teams. gotten yeah. super lucky in yeah. that regard where it's it's not even just that they've played bad teams it's not even just that they've played against teams that are hurt teams are also they're just lucking out and teams are not they're, like they're being yeah. terrible on special teams so yeah. they're a winner for that the other the last winner that i have is cliff kingsbury and his agent because <laughs> what they did was yeah. just so genius when all of the stuff went down in college football where Lincoln Riley leaves and then Brian Kelly leaves. And now there's these two big programs that have openings and Cliff Kingsbury's agent just kind of sneaks it in there. Like, Hey, this definitely has to be from his agent, by the way. And it's just like, Hey, let, let everybody know that Oklahoma was interested in Kingsbury, whether they are or not, it's a genius move Yeah, because now with him, him only having a year left in his deal, they got to pay him. They have to. Because yeah. it's, especially with what they're building this year, they got to pay him to keep him around. Or 
Maybe he's just going to want a jet anyways. I don't know why he would with all the weapons that he has there. I don't but know, it's just man. genius for him to go get his bag and find a way to get paid extra money. Just did, super, super smart by him and his uh, uh, agent. Did you hear what Brian Kelly got? A hundred uh, million dollars. Yeah, both him the, and Lincoln Riley got the bag listen, and a half. Brian Kelly got like, and this is why Clint, Clint, the agent must have been nice, but I don't even know if he can get that from the NFL team, what Kelly got. Oh, I don't his, think he can. He yeah. got, he got he got a car allowance for two cars. I don't know why Brian Kelly would need two cars allowance. He got an allowance for we got to get the wife a car monthly monthly allowance. He also got a one point two million interest free loan to buy a house, mm-hmm. and uh, because he needs a loan interest free because he's only making a hundred million (laughs) dollars as a salary he needs that interest free loan to buy a house i'm just like and he gets to use a private jet i don't know how many times but there's that's in the contract i mean lincoln riley had something similar where he has unlimited use of the private jet yeah usc literally bought both of his houses above market value. I think it was like $500,000 above market value. What do they need two houses in Norman, Oklahoma for? They they don't, but because it's college football, like, and that's, this is, I think this is what you were getting at is that even as good of a move by Cliff Kingsbury as it was by him and his agent, if he really wants to get paid like that, he has to go back to college. Yeah. I don't know if like, I I don't know. Maybe, Maybe I'm crazy for this. I think once you, there's like a certain threshold of money and I'm probably, I probably am crazy. So people will probably tell me I'm stupid in the comments, but whatever. But like, I feel like once you get to a certain threshold of millions and millions of dollars, whatever that is, I don't know the exact number that I have in mind, but at a certain point it, it's, it's all the same. I know it's technically not. And like, it, like, if you're making more money, you're obviously making more money, yeah. but how much different is it if you're making five million dollars or seven million dollars a year to coach in the nfl versus ten million dollars to coach in college i i feel like that wouldn't be very different but i also have a very different financial life at this moment yeah i think it's because we are not in that financial life i think if you're in that financial life and the you know the you know you're you're supporting your entire family almost right uh you know your parents your in-laws your your kids future and their future and their kids future. yeah it's setting them up for life that your family going forward will never have to work again basically um, yeah but like if i was cliff Kingsbury, i'd be really like can arizona really give me that and be they, like, i mean they'll be able to give him something well actually i no, think like they that. can they just won't be able to give it for the 10 years because yeah. I, like there's been i'm pretty sure there's coaches in the nfl yeah, Gruden don't quote me on this. That are making, yeah, that are making yeah. big money like that. Obviously, yeah. didn't turn out too well for yeah. the Raiders and Gruden. But yeah. there's coaches that make big money like that in the NFL. I just don't know if they're going to give it to somebody who's only actually had one successful NFL season. We'll see. Yeah. That'll definitely be yeah, it's crazy. interesting. But either yeah. way, a winner move on his agent and him to just throw his name in the hat there and automatically create buzz, and then for him to not just directly deny it too. Yeah. That's also like a, a pros pro move. Yeah. yeah. You do, you say no without saying no. And that still leaves the door open for you to leave because you didn't officially say no. You just said you would deal with it later, but you're still technically saying no in the moment. Like it's a whole thing. I think, I don't know. It's, it's really stupid. I do think that he handled the entire thing well in order to give himself as many options and hopefully collect as much money as he can. So yeah, yeah, he's, he's another winner of the week for me. Who are your losers of the week? Okay. I got one quick one because I think we already kind of knew that he was a loser when he came back, but like now officially we can call him a loser, which is Cam Newton. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'll cross him off my list. I'll cross him off my list. Because he was a, like he was done and yeah, like he came back, I'm back, blah, blah, blah. It's a nice feel good story so that, uh, you know, Panther fans can reminisce about him not jumping on that fumble in the Super Bowl one more time that they can imagine <laughs> that their, their quarterback 
couldn't put his body on the line to get that fumble and maybe change the game. But, you know, it's okay. I prefer Jake DeLome anyways. I always thought he was a better quarterback anyways. And he may he was a lot closer to winning a Super Bowl for the Panthers than Newton was in that one Super Bowl appearance. Yeah, DeLome, one missed one miss field goal at the end of the game. Yeah, DeLome, DeLome yeah. almost won in the Super Bowl. So I can say more about him than I can about Newton. So he was a, a bonus uh, loser of the week for me. But for me, the loser of the week has to be Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. I don't know who's more of the loser in this week. I'd probably go with Pete Carroll because Pete Carroll, like if there's a coach that I just can't stand in the NFL, it's Pete Carroll. His smirk, like, honestly, I feel like just going by. Every time he does that smirk, I feel like slapping him across. The face. <laughs> it just, is, this, is this his smirk or his, like, huge gum chomp? It, it's that smirk, gum chomp, whatever it is. It just really irritates me. I, there's no coach. Like, I'm pretty good with most coaches. I don't think they – even Bill Belichick don't bother me, right? He's a mm-hmm. great coach. But there's something about Pete Carroll just rubs me the wrong way. He – he's become stagnant. Like there's no more innovation in his teams. Uh, Like the teams just become worse and worse year after year. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't want to call Russell Wilson a loser because I like, I don't feel like it, but I know you have to. Uh, I really like Russell Wilson. I still think he has years left in him, but the poor guy has never had an old line to protect him ever on this team. Uh, it's it's hard to build a no line when you trade away two first round picks and then throw yeah. a massive contract extension at a linebacker who plays at the safety position. Like when yeah. your team does stuff like that, yeah. it's difficult to build a no line around. Yeah, 100%. And they really didn't need Jamal Adams to play that linebacker position because you already had the best linebacker at that position in Bobby Wagner. And so I did not understand that. They keep on um, not investing in the O-line for Russell Wilson. And if I was Russell Wilson, I'd be sick and tired of this. I'm pretty I, sure I, he wants to leave. Like that, that yeah. was, It was a whole thing in the offseason. So that'll yeah. be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I almost wonder if he came back too early from his hand injury and like forced Maybe, it. Maybe, but, but, he but still, I, he's, he's the type the of guy. so good. He, but, but like he also – <laughs> I, I'm going to catch some heat for this. He is, but he isn't like everybody says he is really, really good. And he is like talent wise. He has that it yeah. talent. He has all of the talent that you need to have, but at the same time, he, he still hasn't really put it all together where he well, makes he's, he's running for I, his I life. It's, it's weird. God. It's weird we, though. Like if we think he, the- he, he's had the weapons on offense and yeah. he just doesn't like. How do you not throw to DK Metcalf? The how do you is, just ignore I, I your that. best receiver I, like that? That's like Josh Allen when he was not throwing it to Stefan Diggs. You know, but he, he still he was through. throwing it to Diggs though. That's the thing. Like he was still. But Diggs who's was still the getting like receiver? five targets? That that's well, a of course. But they don't have like is they lock it the better receiver or is Metcalf? It's the it's better Metcalf. Receiver? It's Metcalf. Uh, Lockett is the better route runner. Year. Lockett is the better route runner. It's Metcalf. Stefan Diggs is also the better route runner. So, he's no, he's also better. just a better receiver too. Um, <laughs> all right, my I, I'm going to add on to yours actually. Okay, because you did go with two quarterbacks. I I yeah. actually went with just old QBs in general. It doesn't apply yeah. to every single old yeah. QB, but yeah. Big Ben, yeah, washed. Yeah, you already mentioned it. Cam Newton. We saw what he was last year. It was cool that he had his moment when he came yeah. back for that first game, but he, this is who he was. Like this yeah. is what Cam Newton is. He's yeah. not a good quarterback. I know a- anymore. He was a good quarterback. He's not a good quarterback anymore. I know the offensive line in Carolina is just garbage, but he's still not good. You Bill can't Bell blame every knows. single <laughs> one of his struggles on just the O line. Yeah, like he wasn't good. At, like there's a reason that Bill Belichick cut him, and it's yeah. not because. He it's not just because like he thought that Cam needed to be a starter somewhere else and wanted to give him the opportunity. It's because no. Cam is not a good quarterback anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, if he's like if he's gonna be playing like that, which obviously like you can't have this incredible reaction to the week he came back and then like a terrible reaction 
to this week and act like that's just like a thing. Yeah. It's like water will find his level. He's not as bad as he was this past Sunday, and he's not obviously anywhere near as good as he was in previous years of his career. Yeah, He's somewhere in between there, but he's definitely trending towards – partially because of how good he used to be, but also because of where he's at now. Maybe he's just not a, a guy to have as a backup anymore either. Like that, that'll be something I think yeah. is going to be interesting to watch. But the other guy that I had on there, Big Ben, Cam Newton, you threw Russell Wilson in there. I put Matthew Stafford in there too. Yeah. yeah loser of the week. It's, yeah. it's old quarterbacks. They're the, they're the loser of the week. So there were one of them for me. Um, I had the Eagles are a loser of the week. Not be not even just because they lost, because that was a bad loss. That was terrible after the way they played the last couple weeks. It's because of Jalen Rager, because of drafting Jalen Rager, whatever it was, 21st, I think, overall. And then the very next pick is Justin Jefferson, who everybody, I think, at the time yeah. was saying he's the clear-cut better wide receiver. He could have gone earlier in the draft, and it would have been understandable. Like when, when Jalen Rager got drafted, it was – it was like 50 50 on, Oh, this was a weird pick. And usually when it's split that much, it's cause it's a weird pick. It's not just like an out of nowhere. Oh no, that's it's whatever. It's a good pick. It's probably a weird pick. And it was, and Justin Jefferson from day one has been leagues better than him. They tried to get fancy by taking Rager and it just has backfired on them completely. So that they're losers but, of the week for that. But, but we expect that from Philadelphia. <laughs> I, I mean, we, yeah, they. I mean, they did also do that with uh, JJ Arcega Whiteside. I think yeah. that's how you say his name. Yeah. They yeah. did that when they could have instead drafted DK or drafted Terry yeah. McLaurin, or there's a couple of other wide receivers that yeah. year. And you could say that about every single team that drafted that year because every sure. single team passed up on those guys. But they were still available when they took Arcega Whiteside, and then they went back and messed up the wide receiver position again. And if you look at their roster, it's not like the Eagles have a trash roster. They need some help. They they have clear holes. However, if you take if you put either DK Metcalf or Terry McLaurin on that roster and then you also put Justin Jefferson on that roster yeah. and then you run it back this year and you have the same draft that they had, like that's an insanely talented wide receiver core to the point where at that point I would then probably think maybe Jalen Hurts can make this work long term yeah. as a quarterback, not just as like a facilitator of the offense because of how good of weapons he would have had around him then. So they, they've just completely botched the wide receiver position, yeah. even though I think they got Devonta Smith right this year. Yeah, well – I was gonna say right, yeah. that like, if they it's, it's if, the past if, it's the past two years it's not if, it's not this year it's the two before that if they didn't take Devonte Smith there I'd be like I, I I would really question the GM by now yeah it would have been hilarious if they had yeah. taken so I don't even know who what Rondell wide receiver Moore, it would have been I don't know who it was Rondell but Rondell Moore's been good it was in a, like a limited okay. role for yeah, limited role, Arizona. Yeah. Kadarius Tony is I I yeah. still think he's really really good. Yeah. Even though he hasn't been used enough like they I don't know, there was a lot of good wide receivers, but they botched yeah. those that position. So yeah. those are mine. I have a honorary mention loser of the week though. Um and we talked about this pre-show. My my honorary loser of the week is my uh, 6 month old puppy because he got his nuts chopped off. He got neutered. This morning, he still won't look at me um, since I brought him home. He's just, he's got my, my fiance is, she doesn't, she didn't like the idea of getting him an actual cone. So she got like a, a almost like a neck roll, like a fullback's neck roll for him. Yeah, that went all that the way the around. Travel one? The yeah, travel yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she pretty much got him like one of those things you see people wearing on the yeah. airplanes so yeah. they can sleep like an airplane pillow. And he's just walking around with that on his neck. He will not look poor at me. Guy. Yeah, poor guy. He was. It happened on December first, um, so he was one day short of participating in No Nut November. Uh, he missed the cut by one day. <laughs> but you know what? It, it is what it is. You got to. Yeah. Th it's, it's just kind of what needs to happen. Um, it, depending on your circumstances. Life. And I want to be able to take him to dog parks and not have to worry about anything. So yeah. I'm sorry to to my puppy Finn, but he is also a loser of the week because he literally lost a part of himself this week. 
Um, so yeah, it, 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 it is what it is though. It's, yeah. That's kind of just life. Hopefully, I don't have to go through that. That would suck. All right. Um, best bets. <laughs> you don't know what I wanted to say there, but I'll, I'll leave. I, I actually, game. so I actually, um, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Make your joke, though. What, what were you going to well, say? Yeah, I, I, nothing. Like, uh, one day we're all going to lose. That's okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to say that's what happens when you get married. I I was going to say that. <laughs> That's what you I, were going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I am married, so I, I don't want to say it just in case she watches it. She never watches it, but, you know, just in case one day she does I, I really it. thought that was the joke that you were going to make. I was going to say. That feels because, like the typical joke. I know, I, I know that you're, you're planning on getting married. You're in the planning stages here. Uh-huh. And... Uh, and I, I didn't want to say it beforehand. I'd rather you you embrace <laughs> it and 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 feel what it feels like, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we'll have to check back in on that. But I, um, love right. I love you. I love you, I do love you. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta throw that one out there. To yeah. Save yourself. <laughs> yeah. Throw yourself a little lifesaver, life life yes. lifeboat. Um, yeah. All right, best bets, Manny. We got to talk about. <laughs> Yo, I'm consistent. That's, that's you are really you cool. are the most consistent on the show. Yes. Um, you are consistently terrible, <laughs> but you are the most cons- I guess you know what? Here's the thing: you're not actually consistently terrible. You're consistently just below average. But with yeah. your consistently just below average over the course of the season, that's terrible in terms yeah. of gambling. Yeah. yeah. So. For anybody who has been following this uh, standings, wise, Manny was two and three last week. Once again, not a bad, not a terrible week. You could get by with a couple of two and three weeks where you're down, but not too far yeah. down. Yeah. But when you go two and three every single week, you end up with a record of thirteen and twenty-seven. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that's terrible. just not where you want to yeah. be. That's since week five. I went three and two. I was the only one who had a winning week last week. I'm clawing my way back. I'm eighteen and twenty-two since week five. Casey was the worst on the show last week. He went one and four. He is, he had a huge lead. He's now only at 21 and 19, which yeah. I would gladly take he's, as my record. He's basically becoming the Seahawks where yeah. week by week. Start hot and worst. then fall off a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 All right. Soon so Casey's enough, picks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to put a, you're going to have to put some real work into passing. I'm, I'm changing it. This week is my last week of picking teams. After this, my five best bets are going to be prop bets. Because all right, I, let's. I are, you got to change something. It's at I, some point I if you can't do, get it rolling, you got to give. I something can't else be a try. like I can't be like Pete Carroll and just become stagnant. This is my last week. Like Pete Carroll, I'm going to give it a go. If it doesn't work next week, I'm going all prop. I'm not going to stay like Pete Carroll and just keep on doing the same damn play over and over again and never work. So this is my last week. If I don't get above five hundred. I'm going to props, which I do right. better at anyways. <laughs> All right. So here's here's Casey's picks. Casey has the Eagles covering seven. He has the Colts covering nine and a half. He has the Bengals covering three. He has the Giants covering four and a half. And he has the Washington football team covering two. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go first again, Manny, in sure. terms of me and you. Um, because yeah. I had the winning record, I, I like to go last. Sure. Um, that way, if I need to change any of my picks because you have all of the same picks as me, <laughs> I can do that on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious to see how many people win because they go opposite of me. I hope everybody's fading your picks. <laughs> so I got Arizona minus seven and a half against Chicago. Okay. I got Cincy as well at minus three versus the Chargers. I got Baltimore minus four against Pittsburgh. Uh, I got San Francisco minus three and a half against Seattle. And I got Kansas City minus nine and a half versus Denver. All right. Okay, so I don't I don't have to change my picks then. I'm I'm yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Because we only agree on one pick. Yeah. So that makes me comfortable. Okay. And you, so the last one you had Kansas City is minus minus nine and a half. You got it at yeah, yeah. Okay, minus nine and a half. Just making sure for the for the record, I have that down. Yeah. So I I will say I do have six picks yeah. that I'm mulling between. 
I, 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 will, had a- I will give all six. I will just okay. give my five that I am confident in this moment in. Okay. But I'll be I'll be betting all, all six of them. But yeah. the five that I am the most comfortable with right now, I'm going to start off with one that might be a little puzzling, but I'm going Falcons covering an 11-point spread against the Buccaneers. It's because the Bucs have not covered as often on the road versus at home, and this is a game yeah. in Atlanta. Atlanta's been very bad at home, They're, but – Tampa Bay covering on the road has not been all that great. And it's, yeah, it's a divisional game. You never know. So I'm going to take my chances there. It's also a large spread. So for them, I mean, they could still lose by two scores and it'd be okay. Like they could lose 34, 24 and still cover. So I, that's, it's a pretty big spread to give me some comfort there. The one we agree on, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave that one out. No, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that one in. I'm going to leave that one in. Um, I have 49ers covering three and a half. I'm rolling with the 49ers. I've, I've won with them the last couple of weeks. I'm going to keep going on that hot streak. I trust them. I trust in Jimmy G oddly enough. He just, I, for some reason he runs that offense in a way that makes everybody else comfortable. Cause the running game looks better when Jimmy G is running that offense. I, I don't understand it. It's not like he's this incredible quarterback. We talked yeah. about this last week, yeah. but they just, the things just get rolling when he's out there. So I don't two know. I'm injuries, keep that. The and only, it's against the Seahawks. Yeah, I just don't and, trust the Seahawks right now. And there's two injuries that that kind of I sat on that one, uh, which is Debo Samuel mm-hmm. and Fred Warner. So one on offense and one on defense. Oh shoot! You know what? Yeah. I might pull my bet. I might yeah. pull this one because <laughs> I totally forgot about Debo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debo's I'm pulling it. Okay, okay. Forty Nine ers are out. They're out on my. I'm I'm out on 49ers this week. Maybe I should pull no. mine out because I no, do have. Gotta leave I, it. <laughs> I, I, I have a. I had a six one it. and I crossed it out. I crossed. All right. It if out. you want to, let me let me give mine, and then if sure. you want to go back and change that last one, pull them. You can. Um. So 49ers. I'm still gonna end. Up, I, I've already placed it, but I, I will take them off of my best bets. Yeah. I I have the Rams team total. A bit of a weird one. A bit of a weird bet this week, but the Rams team total. Over 30 and a half. They're going up against the Jaguars. The Rams have not looked great the the entire month of November. They just didn't look good. But I feel like at some point that offense has to get things figured out again. I don't know how they do that, but playing against the Jaguars is probably a good way to start. Um, The Jaguars have not been a good team at all this year. They have not been a great defense. There's there's going to be or there should be a lot of opportunities if the Rams just play like, oh, yeah, we're the Rams. We have yeah. all of these weapons. I know they don't have every single weapon that they started the year with, but they need to figure it out at some point. They have to figure it out at some point. Matthew Stafford cannot be on my loser of the week two weeks in a row. He's going to get this figured out. So I got the Rams team total over 30 and a half. I think they have a big offensive boom this week. I got the Eagles covering six and a half against the Jets. Just because I'm I'm gonna bet against the Jets. They won last week. That they, they can't win or cover two weeks in a row. I just don't see that happening. So I'm gonna bet against the Jets this week. I got the football team covering two and a half, and I got the Colts covering nine and a half against the Texans because I think the Colts are due for a big week again after they had that whole mishap that happened against the Buccaneers where they should have won, didn't finish the game off. I think they'll be able to just kind of cruise this week. Does it make me a little bit nervous that I have three of the same picks as Casey? I don't love when I do that. I don't love when I have the same picks as Casey or you. I like to try and keep things a little different, but I got to stick with my gut here. Those are my picks. Are you? Who are you changing your 49ers pick to? Uh, I have the one that I crossed out, and I was going with it at first, was mini minus seven on Detroit. Okay. I, I was considering that one. I just I am so I can't figure out the Vikings when they play. Yeah, they're, 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 but if you're gonna bet job. against, if you're gonna bet on them, bet on. I guess it's a time to give it a chance. Yeah, against Detroit, why not? Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are our best bets. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, we can get a. We hopefully we can all three have a winning week. You know, we haven't yeah. done that yet this year. We've had no. two out of three of us have a winning week. We've also well, had a week where we only won one bet, all three of us combined. We need to have all three of us have a winning week yes. at, at some point. So we're really we're all rooting for you, Manny. We are yeah. all rooting for you. <laughs> 
Thanks. <laughs> um, all right. So preview of the Monday night football game, big time Monday night football game. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's, it, I, I, it's not for like all the marbles or anything like the bills it's, can technically lose this game and still be okay. Obviously they're in a much, much worse position. If they do, they'd be down. On Both the teams rate. are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say that it's an absolute must win, but it's about the closest thing that you're going to get to a must win the rest of the way. You got the Patriots eight and four. They're the two seed. They're the AFC East leader. They are coming into Buffalo for the Bills, who are seven and four, and I believe currently in the sixth seed. Yeah. So big time matchup, playoff implications, yeah. like massive playoff implications. So Manny, I'm going to start with you. Who are the offensive weapons that the Bills have to pay attention to for the Patriots? Who do we need to focus on? Like you know, I thought about this. I think Harris is the important one on the back end. But I think honestly it's to get past that that offensive line. The offensive line's been great for Mac Jones to do what he has been doing. I'm not gonna say Mac Jones is like the savior of the Patriots or anything, but like he's played okay. But a lot of that has to do with the O line being so good. And I think this is again if there's anything on the offense that the Buffalo Bills will need to get through is is that O line, and uh, it's going to be a big game for that D line in Buffalo to to push that offensive line back towards Mac Jones and be able to to make him look like a rookie. I think that's what teams I, have struggled with is yeah is is pushing that O line into Mac Jones to make Mac Jones feel like a rookie. He hasn't had to. Because that old line's been protecting, giving you enough time to, you know, do the screen plays and the hitch plays and the the short passes. The short so passes. Just say, it. come on, man! You just come yeah, on, and say the short, it. The short passes. passes. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brady did that for years too, right? Yeah, I mean that's how they ran their offense. Yeah. It was it's yeah. a successful offense. If you get yeah. the ball out, if you throw, if you're a, if you can play with timing and you yeah. you can end up getting Mac yards Jones, for the catch Mac too. Jones, it, it works. Mac Jones, uh, you know, he releases that ball pretty quick. That's what Belichick likes in his quarterbacks, right? He he has, I mean, far and away been the best rookie quarterback. He's probably going to run away with the rookie of the year since Jamar Chase kind of fell off after that midway point when teams started keying in on him a little bit more. I think Mac Jones, if he keeps going, even if he has a bad game or two down the stretch, he probably still runs away with the rookie of the year the way things are going for him because he's been that consistent the rest of the time. I. I hate saying it, but like that, he is a good quarterback. I thought he would be going into the year. I didn't think that he would be a good quarterback right off the bat. I thought it would pr- probably take some time, but I did think he was a good quarterback coming out of college. I thought he was. I, I actually talked about this with Nate Geary, uh, one of the offseason shows. I listed him as my third best quarterback in the AFC East when I said it was behind Josh Allen and Trubisky. I mean, Mac Jones is the second best quarterback in the AFC East right now. It's just kind of the way it is. He's played really well to the point where it, you're just in denial if you're not willing to give him credit. Yeah. Is he chucking the ball deep and being really successful on every single throw to every single area no. of the field? No, but he's doing what's asked of him, and he's he's hitting the receivers in a way that they can keep the ball moving after because he hasn't thrown for a ton of air yards. But he's put his his receivers in position to get yards after the catch, and that's part of what makes them such a successful offense. Yeah, not just that, but it's it's the manageable downs, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, he's getting the four yards on the first down, and then he's getting another, you know, four yards on the second down. Now it's third and two instead of third and seven, and that's what they do well is that short manageable game where you know, like you're saying, they keep on running, you know, running the time off, right, uh, possession of the ball. So they're running, you know, four yards, four yards, two yards, four yards, and so on. And before you know it, it's almost the end of the quarter. <laughs> They've driven and the it, ball. It helps. Way. Yeah, and it helps to have a running game the way of a, they they run yeah. the ball too, because yeah. they have yeah. a couple of really good running backs. Yeah. I think Damian Harris is probably the best running back yeah. in the AFC East. Yeah. I don't even think it's really close right now, just the way yeah. everybody's playing. He is just he I think he was going into the season. He's proved it during the season. Yeah. The Patriots have a good offense. They do yeah. a lot of things really well. I think I don't remember who it was, but it might have been an anonymous coach 
But somebody this past week, there was kind of a quote that went around saying that the reason the Patriots are so good is because they don't make mistakes. Their players are always in the right position. They do the right things. They're fundamentally sound. It might not be flashy, but they do the right things, and so they continuously make the right plays. Mac Jones has fit into that style of play. He's not flashy. You see when he tries to be flashy, he signals for a first down, three yards short of the first down. He does stuff like that. So he's better when he's not flashy. He fits into this offense. The biggest question mark, I think, on their offense – Obviously, like their tight ends are gonna, their tight ends are good. They're good. Like there's no, yeah. there's no way to not yeah. admit that. Also, yeah. the Patriots have good tight ends. They've kind of set up that offense in a way to beat the Bills, and they were very smart about it because they they're a running team and they have good tight end play. The thing that I'm actually interested in, and I think everybody is probably because it's the first game without Trey White. How do the Bills cornerbacks fare against the Patriots receivers who? Kendrick Bourne and uh, Jacoby Myers, they've been good. Not great, but they've been good. Yeah. How do Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson and then anybody else who gets into the rotation also, how do they fare against those wide receivers? That could end up meaning a lot for yeah. the Bills this week. If they can – if they get, get – give them as many catches as you want. I don't care. Wrap up, tackle, do yeah, not tackle. let them get yards after catch. Yeah. Because that's where their offense in the passing game succeeds so much. If they're not getting yards after the catch, they're not going to have a successful passing game. That's just not the way it's been this year. So if, like I said, Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, obviously everybody else in the secondary and on the defense, but if those guys who are filling in for Trey White at corner, if they can wrap up and tackle, that's going to be very important in limiting passing yards. Yeah, and they have another sneaky good wide receiver, I think, is Nelson Aguilar, who can have pop. He he comes in. There's there's times when I think, oh, Aguilar is done, and then he has another decent game for the Patriots. So they, they got some, like, it, this team reminds me a lot of Brady's first two years and where they don't have the big wide receivers. They had, like, I think, Dion Branch, Deont- and, yeah, Dion Branch, and, Branch yeah. and Troy, Tim Brown, I think, Tim or Troy Brown, Brown yeah, Troy one Brown. of those two, yeah. Troy Brown, yeah, yeah. So they had those two guys, and they didn't have a big tight end, but they had a decent running game, and you know, a very good old line and a very good defense. So it, yeah. it, it, this team reminds me a lot of that same kind of style, short plays. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think the D line for us is so important because as you push that O line back, that's where we are going to succeed because now Mac Jones is not going to have that quick time to pass the ball, uh, which is what their plan is, is get rid of the ball under two seconds, basically. So that's going to be the key for me, I think. Yeah. I, we will. I'm gonna make you repeat that when we get to the keys yeah. of the game. Then, and yeah. I, I don't disagree with that either. I had something similar. So yeah. let's move on to the defense. Yeah. Who who is your defensive game changer for the Patriots? Watch oh, Judon. Judon's a game changer, hundred percent. I know a lot of people will say Jackson is at at corner, but like for me, it's Judon. That O line. We've been questioning that O line the past couple of weeks. And uh, I think Spencer Brown and Feliciana were practicing, so they probably mm-hmm. will be back. So this is going to be the first time in a long time we're going to have our normal. Pretty sure Spencer Brown was already activated officially too. So yeah, yeah. And very Feliciano good news for the offensive was, line. Feliciana mm-hmm. was practicing, so I think this is going to be the first time in a while that our full O line is going to be together and healthy, hopefully, and. Uh, that's going to be – that's a beast to play against first week back. Uh, Matt mm-hmm. Judon's not going to be easy, and especially for Spencer Brown, because I think Brown and him are going to be lining up, I think, most of the time. And so this is going to be a big test for Brown because Judon is a definite game changer, and he can he can turn things around. And what he does is make quarterback start playing hero ball. And when – we know when Josh Allen starts playing hero ball, he usually leads to mistakes. And so we don't want that uh, coming from Judah. People, people in the comments hate when we talk about Josh Allen and hero ball, but like, it's, it's a thing that it's, happens. It's not it, like it's, it's a, a massive part of his game it's, anymore, it's, 
but it's something that I, every quarterback it does up. it. It's not like it's yeah. just a Josh Allen thing. Yeah. Every yeah. quarterback does it. Yeah. It's when you get under pressure, you either just take sacks or you play hero ball. Yeah. And that's that's just kind of the way Allen. it works with quarterbacks. You don't get quarterbacks who yeah. have to run for their lives and aren't doing one of those two. Sometimes hero ball works. That's the thing. Yes. Sometimes yeah. it works. Sometimes Most it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't. Yeah, uh, but so that- I, I will. I'm going to one up you with Judon yeah. though, yeah. Um, because I think, and I didn't even think of this until you were talking. Um, he was on my list of game changers. I'm not even going to put him in the list of game changers though. I'm going to elevate him to the the game wrecker status yes, because he, he has been that good. Yeah, he's, he's been just an absolute game wrecker. Not just changing the game, but like he will literally wreck an offense's game plan if he gets going. So the bills, even with Spencer Brown coming back, you're still going to have to give him help on the offensive line to defend against Matthew Judon and what he can do. And hopefully it's going to end up being enough where he's not in Josh's face all day. I I have confidence that we'll be able to hold off enough. I, I I'm assuming he's going to end up getting a sack this game. I don't think him getting one sack is a bad thing. If he starts piling them up where he gets two, three, Obviously, things things can go haywire real quick yeah, at that point. Yeah. You did mention J.C. Jackson. I mean, he it, he it's a weird thing with him because he has been incredible this year. He's yes. been one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. He deserves all the praise in the world for how good he's been. And then you go back to last year, and you're like, oh, well, what did he do against Stefan Diggs when there was no Gilmore? He got burned. I think it's somewhere in between that. I don't think that Diggs is just going to destroy him all game. I, I don't think that's what we should expect. I think that's unfair expectations to do that. I also think it's unfair expectations to think or uns- I, I don't even know what the word would be, but I guess we'll just roll with unfair expectations to think he's just going to shut Stefan Diggs down because he's been so good recently. I think Stefan Diggs is good enough where that's going to kind of find its level and yeah, they'll get the best of each other sometimes, but I think Diggs is still going to be able to get his yards because there's so many other options in this offense that I don't think Jackson will be able to just follow him around. So we'll we'll see how that goes, but he's another guy who he can cause some problems. The last guy on their defense I wanted to mention, um, actually, I guess I got two more. Uh, Kyle Duggar potentially being out. Yeah, he did yeah. test positive for COVID today. If he's vaccinated, I think there's a potential that he can be back in time for the game. Has to but be he still has to negative test out twice. Yeah, yeah, he negative still has twice. to test out of it, but he has a chance if he is if he did get vaccinated. If he did not get vaccinated, he's out at the time of this recording. I have no idea if he is or yeah, isn't. We don't so know. that's just kind of like an up in the air monitor. That it's it's pretty big for their defense if he's not playing. Yeah. But the other guy is Dante Hightower. Yeah, he. I mean, them getting him back has they had a good defense last year. With him in the center of their defense, they have a great defense. And it yeah. doesn't necessarily matter all of the other guys because he's the type of guy who, like Mac Jones, he might not be the most physically gifted player, but he, he does the right things. He does what's asked of him. And it's probably an unfair comparison to say with Mac Jones because Hightower is so much better than that already. Oh, he has been his entire career. He has years to prove it. But that was just the first name that came to mind since we were talking about the Patriots. He just does the right things. He's in the right places. He he doesn't get fooled a lot. He's really smart. He's not your typical linebacker in today's NFL that has a ton of speed. He's like that old thumper linebacker, the big yeah. physical guy. He but he just continuously makes the right plays. Yeah. So he's another guy that I think you got to really key in on of like how do we avoid – maybe not even avoid him, but how do we kind of move him away from the yeah. play? Yeah. How do we adjust so that, yeah. to him? Yeah, how do uh, we adjust? How do we deal with a guy like him yeah. on the defense? Watching watching Matt Judon, I, I sometimes, you know, I was a big guy who wanted defensive line help this offseason. I was very vocal about it. And we did go out and get guys who, who maybe not are making the difference that we thought they would this year. Uh, but if there's somebody who reminds me of Matt Judon a lot, it's Greg Russo. He kind of has that same physique uh, uh, look to him as Matt Judon do. But, you know, I sometimes wonder, like, you know, 
we've spent so much money. Like I, I really miss a Matt Judah. Like I really, but it's it. I, this, so this was something that was unexpected. I think it was uh Joe DiBiase from WGR tweeted out whatever. I think it was, I think it was Joe tweeted out whatever the stats were from. I, I don't even remember what site it is. It was, because he put their at in it. He didn't put like who it actually was. He just put their yeah. at. I didn't click on their at. I just clicked on the, the screenshot that he yeah. tweeted out. But the Bills are number one in pressure rate in the entire NFL. It doesn't Which, feel that way. It yeah. just doesn't feel that way because they're not getting home. They're not getting the sacks. Yeah. But apparently the time and effort that they put into improving the defensive line has worked in terms of pass rush because they've yeah. been getting after the quarterback. Now they just need to take that next step and start – hitting and sacking the quarterback more consistently, which is weird to say, like, I didn't think that that was a thing. I thought that I figured the bills would be like middle of the pack. Yeah. I did not expect them to be first surprised because Jerry Hughes is usually up there for a guy who never gets a sack as Kevin. That's true. Would say in our BF chat, uh, he never gets a sack, but pressure rate, he's always at the top. Um, you know, like, it's kind of funny because, you know, like when we got Stefan Diggs, we could have got a lot of people say, oh, well, we could have got Justin Jefferson. But I think we needed a guy who was already developed. Uh, who's already It would have been beneficial. I, I, yeah. think, I think having the guy who's already proven it uh, at that spot rather than maybe at that time, you know, like nobody knew what Justin Jefferson was going to be, right? We all knew he had potential. But yeah. obviously, he, he, he became what he is. And I think that's kind of the same way as the D-line, right? Having a Matt Judon, you know what you're getting. You're ready. He's established. And Greg Russo is still potential, right? So it, it's one of those. I loved him, you know, drafting Russo and Basham. But there's sometimes I'm just like, you know, I, I wish we had... Sometimes you can tell days. they're rookies. It's yeah, and, and yeah. that's that, it's that's okay part to of admit it. that. Yeah, too. it's yeah, not a bad yeah. thing to it's to not. say. I, you can I tell that they're the, rookies sometimes. Yeah, and I love the picks that they. But I want more still. Draft. Yeah, and but I want a little bit yeah. more. But I will say this: you bringing up the pressure rate of being number one, it also shows why we're so good at takeaways and why mm-hmm. we're at the top of the interception because that pressure rate is affecting. We're not getting home to sacks and stuff. But you could tell it's making quarterbacks throw it, which are causing, you know, uh, interception, which is why our takeaways are differentiate is number one in the league as well. And it doesn't hurt to have guys like Micah Hyde and Jordan yeah. Poyer back there yeah. too, yeah. who I, I really do think that and we'll get to this. I think that they can cause some problems for Mac Jones, the two of yeah. them, even without yeah. Trey White. Yeah. I, I think this secondary can cause some problems for it. Mac Jones. Both of us said it last week that you know, like Trey White is, is a big loss no matter what. He's a he's a he's one of the best in the league. But you know, it, having those two guys, it makes me feel a little okay. Yeah, it, he is the best player on the defense. He yeah. is one of the probably top three players on the team. Wherever you would want to place him, one, two, or three yeah. with actual talent and i would assume yeah. that everybody would be saying trey white Diggs, allen somewhere in that order yeah. or reverse yeah. order however you want to put it he's one of those top three players on the team yeah. definitely the top player on the defense losing him massive deal but having jordan poyer and micah hyde there to to mask yeah. some of what you lose is extremely beneficial so yeah i it i think they can still cause some problems for for mac jones so you mentioned it already but I'm going to give you a chance to kind of talk about it again. Yeah. What is your key to the game for the Bills versus the Patriots? I think Fraser, you know, like you played Belichick enough. You know what he his offense is and what style he plays. It's quick and outs, quick and outs. It's it's do not have the quarterback hold the ball for too long. Um, you're going to have to, I think the key of the game is to get that defensive line using Milano and – and uh, that linebacking core of Milano, AJ Klein, and Edmonds, whoever's playing, uh, to disguise some blitz in there and make mm-hmm. Mac Jones try to guess: Are they blitzing? Are they dropping back? Um, I think that's key because I think you're gonna have to push that O line, and that's gonna be a big job for that D line. When you know that D line is, you know, they don't really hit home, but yeah. Um, 
they they do pressure so we'll see i think that's going to be a big key and i think that linebacking core of ours is going to be really key in this game because especially gonna, with the tight ends that they have yeah. yeah the tight ends and not just that but like like we talked about um the yak yards they're going to be the first guys to uh-huh. at times they're going to be the first guy hitting that that wide receiver tight end or running back whoever it is and they're going to have to tackle and and um Edmonds looked really good last week, and I hope he keeps on continuing it in the Milano. Yeah, I mean, it's look, it's massive that the Bills are getting back both Spencer Brown and Starr. I, those just to yeah. bolster the line of scrimmage. And I, yeah. I had that as one of mine is hold the line of scrimmage. Not even yeah. like you have to control it and force your way with the line of scrimmage, yeah. but you have to at least be able to hold the line of scrimmage yeah. because if you do that, you can stop their running game and make them a passing team. And then it changes how you can play defense. Yeah. And uh, the other the thing that I have, the, sorry, the go one ahead. One thing go I want to put in is you want to make sure that New England's playing third and long. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say long, that's like six plus seven plus yards. So the third and six is the third and sevens. Uh, that's why I think the line of scrimmage is so important because you want to be able to contain Harris and those, you know, little, I'll say short passes. <laughs> to, yeah, to I mean, that's, that's what they are, yeah. Yeah. And so you want to be able to get them to third and six, third and seven, because then you're going to have to put Mac Jones and he's going to have to throw it to win the game or continue the possession. So I think that's why it's really important. Yeah. I I mean, I agree with everything you said there. I, I, I have tackling obviously like don't allow yards after catch. That's, that's a really important thing. Um, Cause Mac Jones is, I actually wrote this one down, so I'll just read it right to you. Mac Jones is 31st in the NFL in air yards per completion. But he's still one. I think he's one of the top ten in the NFL in yards so far this season because his receivers have done such a good job with yak yards. So tackling is going to be a really important thing. I just put down physicality, though. I think physicality is my number one key to the game for the Bills, and I think we take this back to the game against Indy. And I know there's no there's no Spencer Brown, there's no star, so it's a different it's a different ball game. It's like things are definitely different. The no defensive Feliciano line either. doesn't have everybody there. The offensive line is a makeshift offensive line where Spencer Brown, the, probably the meanest guy in the offensive line, is yeah. not out there. So it, it makes a difference not having them. But in that game, the reason the Bills fell behind so fast is they just got out physical. They were yeah. not ready. They got punched in the mouth at the line of scrimmage over and over and over and over again. And the Patriots are the type of team that want to do that same exact thing to you. They want to come in. They want to play smash mouth football on the offensive line. Whether they're passing the ball or not, they're going to try and hit you. They're going to try and get a helmet on you, get pads on you. Doesn't matter. Knock you off your game. The Bills need to come in with an insanely high level of intensity and ready to just play physical football. Yeah. Does does that mean maybe that they have to take a slightly different approach at times? Sure. Potentially they, they might have to. But the Bills need to be ready to play physical. Having guys like Starr and guys like Spencer Brown back are massive for that. Yeah. But it's not just the two of them. It, it's, I think it does kind of start with having them back. But obviously everybody else has to get in that same mindset. If you have two guys on the offensive line who are not ready to be physical enough, then the offensive line is still going to get beat up by this Patriots defense. If the defense despite having star back, if there's guys on the defensive line who are not ready to be physical and just play their hearts out, they're going to get beat up by this Patriots offensive line and things are not going to go well. The Bills, as much as they are an extremely talented team, I think they are more talented than the Patriots are. The Patriots play a type of football where if you're not willing to be physical, it's not going to work out this year. So the Bills have to show up and be ready to be physical on the line of scrimmage. That's I, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, if you look at if you look at New England's games, look at how many field goals Nick Folk kicks. <laughs> they go drive, 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 drive all the way, waste time, and then they kick a field goal. Mm-hmm. And one of the other keys I think it is is the Bills have to score touchdowns while 
prevent them from you know, t- for them to continue kicking field goals. So I, so hold on, Manny. Hold on, Manny. Yeah. Your one of your keys of the game is that well, the Bills score, have to score more score points early. than the Patriots. Are no. we? Is that what, what we're saying? What I'm trying to say the is they, they the got to come in. Score more points. That definitely because they got to win. <laughs> but uh, what what I mean by that is like they have to come in and score early. Yeah, and, yeah, and 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 make them realize that you know because they're so um, okay with just kicking field goals. You saw like last week. How many field goals did Dick Folk score? Like five, six, right? So most their red zone offense isn't that good. They're mm-hmm. most likely not to. They're not going to get into the the end zone as much, and they're okay with kicking field goals. They got a really good kicker, Nick Folk. So my thing is, is that you got to go back and and you got to you know the three and outs can't work. You can't. Yeah. You know how we're talking about the, you know, like run the ball on the first down. You got to be prepared. You got to you got to take your red zone offense and you got to score points early on them and make them now go, "Oh, well, we, we can't kick field goals." If if the Bills are going to go 3 and out, they're just going to kick keep on kicking field goals and winning this game 12 whatever, 12-3 or 9-6 <laughs> like the Jaguars game. Like you know what I mean? Like they they're gotta... they're okay winning that way. They they yeah. don't care if they score touchdowns as long. Yeah, yeah. no, I I I know yeah. what you're getting at. I know what yeah. you're saying. And the, I think the Bills yeah. have to get it early and and just show that. You know, I think if you with what you're saying, you can look back at last year's two games. The Bills won both games, obviously. Yeah. But you could look back at last year's two games and kind of see what you're saying played out. Different types of teams at this point. The, the Patriots were nowhere yeah, near as yeah. good as they, they are this so year. Many last year. Yeah. But when they let the Patriots kind of control the game that first meeting, yeah. it ended up being a nail biter where it took a forced fumble to yes. end a what probably would have been a game winning drive by the Patriots. Yes. And then the second game, the Bills were the team that came out and controlled the game flow. Yes. They controlled the line of scrimmage, they controlled everything about that game. And they ended up just rolling easy. So you could see exactly what you're talking about played out in last year's game. Yeah. I know it's two different teams, even though there's a lot of the same players, but the same philosophy it. stands, I think. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm right to. there with you. Because yeah. they're they're okay kicking field goals. You got to be like, you know what? We can't get a field goal. We got to get a touchdown. Right. That, right. That's the mentality you have to go against the Patriots. Because they're they're always going to be especially open. with their field goal rate when teams are kicking against them yeah. when teams are kicking sixty percent against them. I don't think Tyler Bass is going to do that though. I think yeah. Tyler Bass he's going to he he's he had some he had his issues against it was against the Colts right where he missed yeah. two. I think yeah. he's a, he's had his bad games already for the year. Yeah. He yeah. flushed that out. We're good. I, I trust in Tyler Bass. I will always yeah. trust in Tyler Bass. Yeah. And um, you know so that yeah. indie game you're talking about? Like I saw. it. A clip. I don't know if you saw it, where they were showing Harrison Phillips on Twitter, and he got knocked down, like like literally pushed by the O line down to the ground, and Jonathan Taylor had a free reign right through the middle. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he he got knocked down like two or three times, and and I am thank God Star is coming back because I think it's, it's a good game to get Star back. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to move Star to the ground like that, like they did Harrison Go. So that's you're so right on that physicality when you were talking about that. That clip came back to my mind mm-hmm. where, you know, that O line and it, it comes back again, right? Like the the line of scrimmage is so important in this game, both for us as an O line for the Bills, and also as a D line for the Bills. It, I think that's going to be the key. And whoever has the the line that controls is probably going to win this game. Most likely, yeah. Um, all right. Whew, that was a burp. Um, game predictions. Who? What is your – we'll do the player prediction first sure. or the stat prediction, whatever you want to do for this. What is your prediction? Then we'll do a score prediction after. Uh, like a stat prediction? Stat player, whatever situational prediction, something like that. Yeah, Matt. I think uh, Mac Jones throws for two uh, two interceptions. Okay, so you're going to just blatantly steal mine here, despite us not talking yeah. about this beforehand. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I, I look, I had, despite no Trey White, the Bills are going to force Mac Jones into two plus turnovers, which I think is a bold prediction Here's- considering the fact that Mac Jones has not turned the ball over that much. He has less interceptions than Josh Allen on the year. He's asked to do less than Josh Allen, but he has not thrown very many interceptions. He's gotten a little lucky sometimes, though, and I think that's where the Bills are going to be able to take advantage of it because yeah. if he throws deep and the ball's a little bit off against yeah. Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, they're uh, making a play. If the ball's a little bit off, even against Levi Wallace, who is a good cornerback, he's probably making a play, whether it's an interception or a pass deflected. I, I really don't care, but he's going to make a play on the ball if the ball is not where it's supposed to be. So I, I think here's, the Bills can force some turnovers here. Here's one for you. I think uh, I think uh, Josh Allen will have two uh, takeaways on him too. So you think he's going to throw two interceptions? Either I, interception you know and a fumble. We don't need this negativity here, man. It's not we a don't negativity. Need <laughs> I just think uh, it's it's two really good defenses who is going to make it tough for these quarterbacks. I think both of them are going to have a tough time. I think uh, I, I, I think, really hope you're wrong there. I really hope you're wrong. I'm not saying two. I understand the prediction. Saying, I do. I understand yeah. what you're saying. I think fumble, I just think everybody listening or watching is also saying, Manny, I hope this works out about as well as your bets do. I, I hope so too. I just, <laughs> you know, naturally uh, watching Allen the last couple of weeks and how he's been playing. Um, and, you know, the O-line still, we don't know if they're a hundred percent or where they're at. Um, you know, like Allen, Allen, a lot of his takeaways are, you know, him just running, try to survive <laughs> and somebody knocks the ball out. Right. It's not really yeah. his, his thing, but I think maybe four takeaways in total for both quarterbacks. I just, I just, I hope it's four on Mac Jones then. Um, I'm going to throw one more in there and I'm going to stick actually with the defense because I don't know what the Bills offense is going to do yeah. against the Patriots defense just it. because I, th- I think it's it's going to be a very good matchup. I really think it's going to be a good matchup. Yeah. So I'm not going to make any predictions on the offensive side of the ball because I think there's a lot of unknown about like how Spencer Brown will be when he comes back. I'm going to throw out this one. Because Ed Oliver has been on an absolute tear these yeah, last yeah. however many weeks you want to say. Even in the game against the Colts, Ed Oliver was still flashing. You could tell he was still out there being the one guy who actually was still playing well. It was yeah. just when there's only one guy playing well in the entire defensive line, doesn't really do enough. I think Ed Oliver gets two sacks. I think he finally has his big, big day. We've seen him flash on tape. Everybody who actually watches tape, which I don't, I would, neither of us do, but like during the game when you're watching, you can see a defensive lineman wearing number 91 showing up time and time again around the ball. I think this time Ed Oliver gets two sacks. I think he has to have that big day. He hasn't really had that big day statistically yet, and it's coming. And what better time than Monday night football in Buffalo against the Patriots, and you just demolish them because Ed Oliver – is just that good. Yeah, I, I can see that. Ed Oliver is going to be this year. He's mm-hmm. been probably, uh, you know, my favorite on that D line this year. He's been, he's been a standout. Yeah, he's been, he's been very good. All right, Manny, yeah. let's finish this out. Score predictions. What do you got for a score prediction? Possession game. Buffalo gets the last possession to end the game. Why are why are we why are you copy? I should have gone first again. Why are we doing know. this? <laughs> they get the last possession. They're losing. They drive the ball, and damn it, and and, and Josh Allen runs it in for the touchdown. Oh, okay, we're good to win it. I have I have Josh Allen throwing for two touchdowns. Okay, and running in for one. And so he's got all three touchdowns plus two takeaways. So he's had a productive game all the way around. A statistically driven day, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then, with with so, that being the case, what is your final score? Twenty-seven, twenty-three. Twenty-seven, twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we agree on one thing here. Actually, we technically agree on two things because yeah. I also have the Patriots scoring twenty-three points. I also have the Bills winning on a game-winning drive. Yes. 
I have them doing it on the leg of Tyler Bass. Yeah. I thought about I that. think, look, I, I think this is a game where Tyler Bass may not be in use because I think this is going to be a type of game where the Bills have long extended drives, but they score touchdowns. And if they don't, I don't even know if they get across the 50 sometimes. So I, I don't think this is going to be a game where we see Tyler Bass out there a lot. Not that I'm saying I don't want to see him out there. This is just kind of the way I'm feeling going into this game. I think the Bills also score three touchdowns. I don't care how they get them personally, but I think they score three touchdowns. I think they win the game on the leg of Tyler Bass at the end of the game, though. So I got the Bills winning 24-23 to on a game-winning field goal. Either way, the, we're, we're both predicting a nail-biter of a game here. Yes. That makes it, me a little uncomfortable. I, I feel like uh, the Patriots and Bills are always a nail-biter somehow. I think the, these two teams just I, – I th- I don't think there's a I don't think there's a way that this game can either not be a complete blowout one way or the other yeah. or a one possession like game winning drive yeah. type of game. I don't I, think I, it's going to be I'd like be... a a two score game that gets kind of brought down to I'd one touchdown shocked. game yeah. at the end because yeah. of like a a BS touchdown drive or yeah. field goal or whatever. I think this is going to either be an absolute blowout either way or a game-winning field goal or touchdown either way. Yeah. And I got to roll with the Bills when I have it in that scenario because yeah. I think these two teams just match up really well. Yeah. So I, I'm rolling with that game-winning field goal. Yeah, I got it. I hope I'm right. right. I really I don't want to be wrong about this. I don't want to deal with a loss to the Patriots. I got I got five field goals in this game and five touchdowns for both teams. So we Look, here's the thing. We both have the overhitting. We also – well – we don't. We disagree on one thing. So we have the overhitting for the game. Yeah. Over under right now is at 43 and a half. At least that's yeah. what I have it as. I also have the Bills, which you can tell people really believe in the Patriots because the line started out at Bills minus three and a half. It has since moved to the Bills minus two and a half. Yeah. And that's only on Wednesday. So it might even be different one by the time you're listening yeah. to this. I think that the Patriots still cover that two and a half. And I hate saying that. You don't have the Patriots covering, so we disagree on this. One of us is going to be right, Manny. Yeah, uh, obviously, but uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I am not going to be a happy person Monday night if the Bills lose. It's I, I do think this is a sweated out type of game. I think I'm it's not, a sweated out type of game. I think you know what this is. This is a revenge game for what happened against the Titans, where I think it's a close fought game the entire way. Yeah. But the Bills actually they actually pull out the win instead of that slip up happening. Not like not even meant to make a joke about the Josh Allen slip there, but literally they slipped up at the end. Yeah. I, I think this time no, that doesn't happen and the Bills convert and they get whatever it is, touchdown, field goal, get the win. I'm curious, like are we not two and zero in Thanksgiving games, but like the last two years? <laughs> three, the last three years, yeah. Yeah, we're like two because it was Cowboys and then Saints. Yeah, yeah, but Monday night we're not that good of a record. I think. I'm trying to think. I saw something about like the last year. time the Bills won on Monday Night Football at home. It's been a little while because yeah. I believe Monday Night Football. Last year was also against the Patriots, but it was in Foxborough for that yeah. second game. Yeah. Well, yeah, when the Bills winning Monday Night Football at home, it's been a while. Yeah. So for them to get a win here would be massive. Yeah, I think it'd be massive. I think this will – a victory here would give them all, all sorts of confidence going into Tampa and, and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, a loss – does not end the season, but really, really, sucks. really hurts. It yeah, really, it really hurts a loss. Is you so. you feel like you've passed the Tom Brady and the Patriots, and here they are again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like that kind of feeling. Like you know, it puts you behind the eight ball. So I, it's the one you yeah, thought what, you took what him behind you the barn and you shot him. But like somehow they came back to life like the Undertaker, <laughs> like ten times. Like you know how Undertaker dies. And yeah, yeah. Away. Always popping up out of the <laughs> yeah. coffin or coming and from under the. This yeah. is like the Patriots, right? They were gone for a while, and then boom, they're up again, like the Undertaker. 
Yeah, I really hope that's just not the case. So the Bills need to go win. No. Undertaker, what is what's your level of confidence? Let's do this again. What's what's your level of confidence in the Bills going into this week? And then we'll close it out from there. I I, I have like percentage wise. We can just we can just leave it as not confident, not sure, confident. Where are you at? Not. We'll sure. just put it. Th- you're at not, not sure. sure. Yeah. I I, I, I am. Don't know what- uh, the Bills are s- been so inconsistent lately. I don't know which Bills are going to show up. It's weird if you look at their DVOA, which I don't even understand all of these numbers. I just know that these numbers like do mean something. Yeah. I know that sounds really stupid the way I said it, but I I just don't like. I'm not. They're, they're good I'm not this DVOA. analytical quote unquote analytical nerd. Yeah. Not nothing that, that there's anything wrong with that. Like people yeah. who do that are extremely smart. People who understand DVOA and all of those different. Yeah statistical projections that are extremely smart. I'm just not that person, but I do understand the significance of it. And the Bills DVOA, I believe, has the most variance ever in the NFL. They're yeah. either extremely good or they struggle a lot. So which Bills are we going to get? I, I agree with you that I'm in that not sure category, but if it's on like a, a meter, I, I definitely am leaning more towards much more towards the confident side yeah. than the not confident side of the not sure. I, you know, like overall, like on paper, they are the better team, I think, uh, offensively, especially. Um, but, you know, like we thought that against the Jags. <laughs> you got to show and up the, and play, though. You got to yeah, show up and yeah, play. Yeah, it, that's the thing. You just, yeah, this this is going to be a real interesting game, man. I, I am nervous about it. I'm going out with a couple of friends to watch it. I'm going to be man. sitting right on my own couch. And I'm not, just, I'm not I, gonna I'm not gonna be watching the game with anybody. I can't do that. I will not do that. I I, I this is the one game I will and uh, I hope I'm not gonna regret it. <laughs> All right. Well let's just I guess we're ending the show on a low note there, but let's <laughs> flip it around here. Manny, we both predicted the Bills to get a win. Monday night football, big time matchup. I keep saying it. Let me get a go Bills. Let's go Bills. Go Bills.